I am Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover of the Tribute F62 from Motor Trail. So as we start we'll walk around on the driver side of the vehicle. The main point you get to is your main connectivity point. So this is where you hook the vehicle up with 240 volt. So you get your hooker blade, lift the collar, slide it on there. Always hook the vehicle up first, then your source, and obviously do it in reverse when unhooking the vehicle, as we wouldn't want you walking around with a live lead, should it be wet or the lead be damaged. We wouldn't want you walking around with a live lead. Underneath there, you have your wastewater drain. So this is anything you've put down a plug hole. So any shower room water, dishes water, hand basin water, all collects in a waste holding tank and you'd simply open like so and this is just your wastewater so normally you drive over a motorhome service bay and drop your wastewater but in the winter it's very important that you drop all the water out of the vehicle so this would be one of the main points you'd want to drop as well coming further back so on the keys you've got a little key here which does this flap here which is your fresh water intake <coughs> so you get a hose pipe put a hose pipe in there Wait until it overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board, which you can see on the main control panel, which I'll show you when I'm inside. And that's how you'd fill with fresh water. To drain the fresh water off, so should you have taken on contaminated water, you do a new drain down for the winter, which is called the winter rise. You would just allow the water to drain out. And then next to it, you've got the flue for your water heater. All the lockers open with the round headed key. So you can put them in, open the doors and push them in. This is the LPG, liquid petroleum gas, so this is a gas locker. And fit two six kilogram propane bottles in there. So once the bottle's on board, you'll want to tie it in on board. Obviously make sure it's turned off when you're traveling and turned on when you're on site. And to connect the pigtail, you need out either an adjustable spanner or a gas spanner, it's a left hand thread with it being gas, so opposite threads. Then you want to nip it up, turn on and off at the top of the bottle, and then finally press the green button which allows the gas through the crash valve and into the pigtail and into the vehicle. But remember to turn that off when you're on the road because it's safer to have it switched off and have it on. Here is your toilet, so this is your chemical cassette toilet so first of all you need to make sure the blade is closed on the bowl of the toilet from inside then you'll be able to lift the blue tab here and slide it out you've got a handle there so you can drag it around the site when it's full so it's not too heavy for you to carry and then to empty you've got your waste disposal pipe which is normally behind or beside your toilet block remove the blue cap press the blue button tip to 90 degrees and empty. Once you've emptied, if you put some water in via the spout, give it a shake, empty again. And if you're using the liquid form, either the green or the blue, you do a capful into here and into the vehicle, which goes into the cassette, then you put that near the vehicle. Or what you can do is you can use the tablets, which are the new form, and you put a pint of water into here, and then you drop the sachet down into the cassette, and that'll break down into the into the chemical and all you need to do is finally push it in the vehicle and when it clicks in it's in place come around the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light and your reverse camera your fridge vents and then this is where the back panel of the vehicle has been strengthened to take a bike rack so should you ever want to fit a bike rack in the near future you can fit a bike rack under here and then coming around you've got a Another little storage space and they're just your winter vents so they go behind those covers there when you're winterizing it just protects the element of the fridge but you can still use them with them on so they just they're your winter covers in the colder months you'd use them you've got your external gas point so this external gas point uses the main feed of the gas bottle on the other side of the vehicle. You'll see that you've got a little gas spigot there, so you just need to chop that off. That goes into there, you'll need some gas hose, which is the rubber orange hose, and some Jubilee clips to connect 
this to the hose and then at the other end to your Kadak or your external awning heater or whatever, your barbecue. And then what you'll do is you'll turn on and off from the top of the gas tap and that'll use the main bottle on board instead of carrying a spare. You can manually open the habitation door, but it is on the centre locking from the bottom. So you'd open the cab, lock all doors there, opens the habitation door only. Underneath the seat here, so you've got your your jack, your brace and your tow and eye there for the Ford. On this particular vehicle it only comes with one leisure battery which is this battery here. And then you've got your main battery fuses, so 20 amps. So, so your main battery lives underneath there which is a banger battery. This customer who's bought this particular vehicle has added a second leisure battery. So they don't normally come with these but this co customer has added one as part of his order. On the cab here you've got your diesel filler which is a capless diesel fuel filling system and below because it's a new diesel engine and the, and the clean engine it's got AdBlue so it's a, about a 17 litre tank of AdBlue and this will come on and give you a mileage countdown on the dash when it comes on if you simply top it up otherwise if you get let it go too low it will go into limp mode which is 50 mile an hour max speed just to protect the engine and if it goes completely dry of AdBlue the engine just won't start and you'll have to get it topped up with AdBlue and then you'll have to get it to the garage or the garage to come to you to reset the computer to allow the vehicle to start. To turn your seats you've got just this little half bar here, so this half bar and then all you need to do, so if it gets stuck like it has there, pull the driving position forward and slide the seat round into the back like so and the driver's seat will do exactly the same come around to have a look underneath the bonnet so your bonnet with it being a Ford opens with the key so it goes in here you go down to number one which will which is your left hand side pops the bonnet two releases the bonnet and then you've got your fluids so you've got your Screen wash, brake fluid, engine oil, engine oil dipstick for checking your levels and your, and your radiator coolant here. You've got a positive under here for giving a jump start and you just earth off the engine hoist which is this loop here. And then you've got your weight plate, so your three and a half ton gross vehicle weight which means anyone can drive this on a standard car license. But then a tow, your tow and weight or should I say a train weight doesn't exceed four and a half tons that's the motorhome and whatever you put behind it on a trailer So when you come in the vehicle, above the fridge is all your 12 volt control panel. So if you're hooked up, you will have mains electric, which is which will work all three pin plugs. Should you not, you'll just be using your 12 volt of your leisure battery. So you turn the vehicle on and off at the top. And then below, you've got your master switch for all your lights, which are all then individually switched. And below the light switch you have the pump so should you be using the tap the toilet or the shower you must put this on as this pressurizes the water and then to the other side at the top you've got your owner light which is your light outside the vehicle above the habitation door and then you can just press through and it'll scroll through the menu so if i to start from the front so sergeant unit ec 363 control panel that's just the name of the control panel 
Then you click again, it says leisure battery is 13.3 volts and charging. That tells you you're hooked up. Should you take the hook about, it'll give a true reading of how full the battery is. You've got vehicle battery of 12.9 volts, which is saying good. And you've got fresh, you've got water tank levels, so you've got fresh 50 and waste zero. And then you always select the active battery. So select battery is the leisure. You always want that to run the motorhome and never the vehicle, as you could flatten the Ford engine battery. Then you won't be getting anywhere. And then you can set timers, and it'll tell you the internal and external temperature. Above, you've got the new styled wheel heat air system. So you just wave your hand over to activate them. That'll wake them up. You've got little reset buttons here, so should you get a warning trying like a warning exclamation mark down the side, you just press these two little buttons at the bottom. And then you've got the gas, so this is the heat, that's the water. So you've got the gas here. So on blue it's on standby. And then when the gas is fed to it, it'll go to orange, which means it's activated. You've got your temperature here, so all the way is 30 degrees. And then opposite that, you've got the electric side. So you can have the gas and electric on together. So the gas would just be for while camping, but you can have it on together when it's cold. It'll obviously heat the vehicle far quicker and with the water, it'll reduce the heating time of the water it takes. So all you need to do is press. So you've got one little dot, which is one kilowatt. You've got two and you've got three kilowatts. So just depending on what the site gives you, you can choose which source available and then across from the heat you've got the water so you have the water all the way down to heat which is at the bottom which is just plus so you've got either half which is 40 or full which is 60 degrees of your water and then again like you've seen there the electrics just went to orange there that means it's active so it's on one kilowatt, you've got two, like, and you've got three kilowatts. So it all depends on what current you're getting through your hookah bleed, which you can use your electric. And again, when it's really hot, when it's really cold, sorry, you can use the gas and electric together by just turning the gas on. Or if you're wild camping and you're in a field in the middle of nowhere, you will just have to use your gas to heat your vehicle and your electric. And, and your electric water heater. So what you need to do, so there is a separate video on this, on our channel, how to operate the wheel heat air, where it goes in a bit more in depth. We'll keep it nice and simple, so we'll just tell you how to turn it on and off and reset the water heater should it fail. So you've got heating and hot water. Below you've got your bed, so you, you turn on and off here, and you've got your bed. So, turn it on which is horizontal and press and the bed will come down to the level. We've got this little tie on there just to keep the canvas from getting trapped in the seat belts. These clip up here and it's just nets on both sides so if you're putting young children up there they don't roll in the cab or out in the sleep or if not they can just be tucked up underneath the bed and the ladder is in the is in the garage so that would just clip on there to gain access so to operate your Feckford styled fridge so you've got a large fridge there with a freezer box and obviously when you finish with it in the winter you'll want to clean it out take all your remaining items out of there and then the last thing you want to do is shut the door as it forms an airtight seal so everything will just get all that air will be trapped in there it'll get smelly and moldy so what you need to do is this little blue lever here you just flip that into the middle just and then slowly shut the door it stops the door from shutting fully on itself and allows air circulation in and out so now I want to how to operate it so you turn on and off at this square button here and then you've got this square button in the middle of the two arrows which changes the source so at the moment it says A which is automatic energy selection so the brain of the fridge 
knows what sauce it needs to be on. So at the moment we're hooked up and we have our gas on and it's automatically went to hook up as it's designed to not waste the gas. Should I take the hook about now, it would switch over to gas automatically. Or should I start the engine, it would switch over to the battery setting, which isn't off your leisure battery, it's a feed from your engine battery off the alternator, which is designed to keep the temperature at the same temperature it was at when you departed. So if you're lucky enough to keep this at home, and you've pre-chilled it two days before, you've put your shop in, your shopping's nice and cool and fresh, on automatic, it'll automatically go into the battery setting, or if you're traveling from site to site, obviously it's designed to keep your shopping nice and fresh until you re-hook up or you turn on the gas. Note that on the automatic, it does wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas. This is just a safety feature, as if you want to pull into a four quarter fill with fuel. Obviously, you'll not be finding electric hookup, you'll not be finding 12 volt because you've just knocked the engine off and if you've left your gas open it will find gas but it's designed to wait 20 minutes and then if you just press to manually change you just press until it starts flashing use the arrows so there we want to hook up you just press ok and it'll ask you what temperature you want to be at if you stop if you pre chilling you want it at full but then once you put shopping in you'll want to turn it down one or two just so it doesn't freeze the shopping and then that's lit on electric hook up on its own and then you've got if you keep going you've got battery that's failed because it's gone to red because the engine's not running so just look out for that red one and then if you go again that's on the gas there now and you can turn off and on from the square button in the kitchen you've got three gas rings So if you have had the gas off for a while and you want to know why the fridge or the boiler or the water heater won't light on gas, always bring it through on the hob first and then below you've got your you've got your oven there at the back. And you've got your grill. So you may want to take these out when traveling and then always make sure that the flat side of the oven shelf goes to the front and the rounded shape goes to the back. You've got storage to the side of the oven. Underneath is where your water pump lives. So you turn this off off and on from the control panel and this obviously pressurizes your water so that's where all the vibration will come from obviously it's pumping the water through and you've got a small filter on there and then in this one you've got storage but you've got your built-in cutlery tray so then once you put your water pump on on the tap you'll be able to on your control panel the tap will work so let's see, then you've got hot water there and cold water. In the cupboard above the kitchen area, you've got your solar panel regulator here, so it's charging your leisure battery or your vehicle battery depending on what you want. So there's a little rocker switch here, so off in the middle, so it's three way. Up is to the vehicle battery and down is to the leisure battery so you can choose which battery you're sending the charge to but it's only as good as the round thing in the sky so obviously in the summer it'll work brilliantly in the winter it'll work but it'll not work to a good advantage because obviously we don't have the best sun in this in the winter time and then you do have storage throughout in the washroom which is across the back of the vehicle you've got your shower so when winter rising I would advise taking the shower head off the shower hose as you can see there it's got quite a big loop in it allow the hose to lie down 
Obviously the waste and the fresh will be open from outside, so any water that gains in here and it dribbles out there will just dribble out the side of the van. You've got your shower screens, so they just need, there's a little turn buckle on there for when you're travelling to stop them moving, but they'll just connect on there by a magnet. Your sink plug's just a push plug. toiletry cabinet up here, complimentary bottle of blue for your toilet and some more space there and then in here this is your wardrobe so you've got your boards for your front bed which I'll get onto in a moment so that's where they store waste, so there's two there's a hinged one and there's a smaller one you've got your carpets You've got your silver screens, which are just suction, so they just suck from the inside of the windscreen and side windows on the Ford cab to black it out. You've got a fire extinguisher, and you've got your ladder, which is in there as well. You'll also notice in the, the top right corner, you've got your tele booster, so you've got a little wheel. It's a fixed aerial, but you've got a little wheel on here, a little black wheel dial that you can turn. So this mins and max the booster, which is the amplifier. So should you be struggling or should you be getting too strong of a signal, you can turn that on and off. So up and down, which will give obviously gives it more or less for the signal. To operate the toilet, so it's a Fedford toilet. So again, ensure the pumps on. Press the blue button. You'll be able to flush the toilet. So, so always flush before use which lubricates the blade then what you want to do is use this grey handle slide to the right use the toilet with the blade open obviously flush after use then slide to the left which shuts the blade and obviously keeps everything in the cassette when this little dial here it'll start moving to red obviously when it goes fully to red it means the cassette's full and requires to be emptied and then topped up with chemical. Underneath your drop down bed, you've got your lockers here, so the three kilograms in all the lockers, just because of the bed mortar. You've got your unique build number, which is obviously unique to each vehicle auto trail build, so if you have any parts or warranty claim, that's the number you quote. You've got your solenoids for your bed but you've also got a resettable fuse. So on the end of the fuse, or should I should say in the middle, it's a 15 amp, there's a little black little button, so you just push that. So should you go for your bed switch, which is obviously above your fridge, and the bed not move, then you think, why is it not working when the key's on? If you just come and obviously reset the fuse, it'll then start the, start the motor operating so the bed goes up and down but you've obviously got to make sure that the bed that the light switch is on as well for the bed to work as that's the way it's wired if you were traveling and you had the extra two passengers in the back you'd lift this cushion out and then underneath there's just a board which would just slide out and it would give you foot space for both passengers so that would just slide out like so and then you put that in the wardrobe at the back, out the way, and there you have, you can use your two travelling seats and you would take the cushions off the back as well. So to make the bed space up, so the bottom double bed, you remove your backrest first on the side facing seats, slide this forward, and then underneath you have a leg which will drop down. So you've got your leg for support. Slide this forward and then there's a board on the back. So if you turn the turnbuckle, that will then lie in that space there and your backrest will go behind. And then with this space, what you've got to do is on here, this slides forward. The roll on press studs, so just make sure the press studs being 
disconnected so everything can slide forward and back. And then the smaller board would go in here. This would this would slide forward. So you don't you, before you put this board in there, you slide that forward into the front space, put your board in. I'll just jump out the way. So that would come forward. The big board from the back would come forward. That just needs to slot underneath there. Like so. so there you are. And then what you do is there's another board, which is the one that's so you find the two in the wardrobe. That will just sit in the back like that. We'll put the base cushions on here. This space here is a slim space which is where the infill cushion goes so that will just go in there and then the backrest again make sure you pull your press studs off that will just go in there and then that spare cushion will just get out of the way and there you have a double bed beneath your drop down bed so just behind the driver's seat Slide this one forward, this is where your EC176 power supply unit is. So you've got your system shut down here, which will isolate all the battery, so the leisure battery in the winter months, but obviously it will turn the head unit off and the rear view camera as it's all wired through here. So if you ever get into it and think, why is my reverse camera not working, or my radio and you've pressed this button off when having the vehicle stood up for the winter, that's why. You've got all your 12 volt fuses which are listed, so they're just standard blade fuses, so it would be a good idea to carry some spares. And you've got your RCD and MCB trips on mains 240 hookup. And then located underneath your double dinette travelling seat at the back. So at the back you do have all your gas taps. So if there's any problems with gas, turn the bottle off to be safe. So there's four here, so these are for the boiler, the water heater and your hob and your cooker. There's two underneath the fridge, obviously for your fridge and your barbecue point. But down here, obviously your boiler and your water heater is underslung underneath the vehicle as it's a wheel water heater. This yellow tap here, when it's across the vehicle, the boiler is holding 10 litres of water at any one time. In the winter you don't want this water to freeze as there's no warranty that covers frost damage. So what you need to do is you need to turn it to the front of the vehicle, point it to the cab and it will drain the 10 litres of water off directly underneath the chassis. Come in with no power and do that so don't try and put the pump on when doing that otherwise it tries to replenish the water that's pumping out. Leave it open during the time you've got the vehicle in storage or stood up in the winter. Open all the taps, take your shower head off, obviously open the fresh and the waste outside and then when you come to reuse it, obviously shut all the taps, shut your boiler, shut your fresh and your waste, fill with water via a hose pipe that comes in here. Go to your control panel, put the pump on. Go to the cold side of the tap first, you'll get automatic cold water. Go to the hot side, it will cough, split down. What it's doing is it's drawing the 10 litres of air out of the tank until the water fills. And once one tap's pressurised, do them all and then you're ready for the season. But obviously make sure that this is facing the front and all the water's left out because it isn't covered under frost. Frost damage isn't covered under warranty. It's your responsibility to drain the vehicle off. So now in the cab, which is based on a Ford Transit Mark 8. You've got your handbrake to your left, or should I say to your right, sorry. And then obviously on the door, you've got your electric windows. And then to lock the cab door 
it's on an evening and it'll also lock the habitation door you just press this button here on the doors for the padlock and then unlock to lock and unlock the cab and habitation door you've got your mirror adjustment which does the two top mirrors only the bottom which is your blind spot has got to be manually moved you've got your lights here so I would just what I would do is just leave them on automatic then you've got your headlight adjustment front and rear fogs and then when the headlights are on you can dim and brighten the instrument cluster here should it be too dim or too bright for your driving in the dark wipers indicators cruise control speed limiter and then you would just press up to set cancel and then obviously in the res is just resume so if you've had your speed limiter on or you've had your cruise control on and you've had to brake or cancel it you can just press resume and it will resume to the last speed it was set at put your volume and your mute these little buttons here will scroll through your heads up display so you split display in the middle so you've got a digital speedometer instant fuel usage distance empty which is your range average fuel usage how many miles you've done on trip one and then the start stop if you go to the buttons here on the far right you can go down to driver assistance where that's where hill start assist is always active you've got maintenance so this is where you can check your oil level your add blue level which is five and a half thousand miles and it says no fill required obviously with the oil that's going off Ford's um, recommendations obviously with it being a Ford Transit based but it needs serviced every year along with the habitation service to keep your warranties with six speed manual gearbox we've lift in the collar in reverse which brings up the reverse camera on the XN head unit you've got your mode here so you can have done normal or eco I will just, just leave it on normal there's no benefits to eco and then you can turn your traction control off here got your temperature so you can have it on hot or cold and obviously if you have it on max on the DMS settings for in the winter or max on the aircon for in the summer fan speed this side you've got your on and off heated mirrors obviously max for the screen heated front windscreen with a being a Ford so it's got the quick clear windscreen and you've got where you want your air to go to so your face or your footwells and whether you're recirculating it within the vehicle or bringing fresh air in you just turn that on and off and then you've got your aircon there hazards got a USB for the head unit and a 12 volt this turns your stop start on and off so whether you want it active or, or not active Obviously, do take in mind that your start stop will only work if there's sufficient charge in the engine battery. So, if it's been stood up for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, then don't expect the stop start to work straight away. The battery will have to charge itself by giving it a run before the stop start comes in and out. And to use your XN head unit, so you've got your main home screen there, so you've got navigation in the top left hand corner. Brings on a map of where you are. Go to the bottom right and you can go to a new route you go to address and then you've got three bars on the middle bar you can put in a town or a postcode and then you go to go to town so if we just say London go to town set as destination then it'll calculate the route Once it's calculated the route, it'll give you your ETA on time of arrival. So it's giving you ETA. So it's 278 mile 
and it's given a, dest a time of arrival of 5.26pm which is a 5 hour and 16 minute journey. If you did want to cancel this off you would just go back and just press end route OK. And then going back to the menu you've got radio which is FM and AM or you've got DAB so I would just use it off DAB but then obviously if you can't get DAB anywhere you can obviously put FM on what you do is go to list you've got all your national stations you've got your regional tiny and weir you've got your BBC stations so you just press on the folders open them up and they'll give you your stations that are available find your favorite stations and then you can press 1 to 6 to save them in preset you can connect to Bluetooth so to connect your Bluetooth you go on your device and find accent on your phones it'll come up here when you're searching it'll come up with Callum's iPhone or whoever searching and you just press pair press pair on the head unit it'll pop up on your phone do you want to pair with this device press pair and then it'll ask you if you want to sync your contacts so just press allow and then it'll download your phone book then whoever rings you it'll come up with a name if they're saved otherwise if it's just a normal call with an unknown number it'll just come up with a number then you'll be able to press media on the music icon here and, it, and you can use your Bluetooth audio to stream your music through the head unit because it doesn't take a CD. Going along, obviously USB connection is there for USB which will bring on iPod. You can have your camera on when going forward by just pressing camera and it works as a rear view camera but then you've got to turn that on and off to obviously get into the other functions of the head unit. And then if you go to setup you can sort all your audio balance out your screen brightness so you can brighten the screen camera and then if you go to other so with this head unit you can get free updates from the Accent website which this model is the F an XF280 on the Ford you go on to Accent updates download it on it with USB stick pop it in here then you would just press load software and, it, and then you press a tick and it'll load the latest version should you have downloaded the, the latest version and this head unit's running V 2.4 but you can update them so you'll know when to update it when it gets a bit slow or a bit glitchy and um, it just means it just needs an update and that's how we operate your Xcent head unit Did you put them in the and your little chip for your GPS goes in the side there, so just in the side towards the driver's steering wheel. And then to black the carb out, like I've said, they're in the wardrobe. You just, they've got suction cups and you just suck them on to the, so there'll be three blinds, there'll be two carb windows and there'll be a windscreen, which you just suck to the windscreen to black out on an evening.